Greetings, this is Dyslexi from the ARMA Community Group, Shack Tactical. In cooperation with Bohemian Interactive, I'm creating a series of videos that explain some of the basics of ARMA 3. Today we'll be talking about the principles of combined arms warfare. The fundamental element of ARMA's combat environment is the infantryman. Everything else in the battle space, be it armor, air, artillery, or other assets, is there to support the infantryman in accomplishing their assigned mission. When infantry and other elements work together, this becomes combined arms warfare. It creates limitless tactical options, which we can only touch upon in this video, so let's cover some of the basics and introduce you to the combined arms warfare in Arma 3. Infantry are the focal point of military operations. If you need to take and hold ground, clear buildings and urban areas, or work in dense terrain, the infantry are who you turn to. While they carry limited capabilities to defend themselves from armored and aerial threats, it's always a dicey proposition to pose squishy, bullet-permeable soldiers against well-armed and armored opponents. While foot mobile infantry are slow, they're also capable of being very quiet and stealthy, something that vehicles generally can't match. In contrast to infantry, vehicles are noisier, more heavily armed and armored, and have better optics and far faster speeds. They make up for their lack of stealth by being extremely mobile and hard hitting. When it comes to mission design with combined arms scenarios, the best thing to remember is that every element, be they infantry or a vehicle, should play a role. Keep it fun and engaging for the whole team. Having one powerful element destroy everything may be fun for that element, but it'll be at the expense of the rest of the team. Be familiar with the strengths and weaknesses of different types of assets and place threats that require teamwork to defeat. Finally, avoid single points of failure. If a vehicle is destroyed, the infantry should have other options to continue the mission. We'll go over several different aspects of the combined arms fight, starting with the matter of simply getting to the fight. Transportation. There are three basic methods to use for this, either via ground, through the air, or at sea. Ground vehicles come in a variety of forms, from armored or unarmored trucks, to armored personnel carriers or infantry fighting vehicles, wheeled or tracked. A good infantry transport will protect the passengers from small arms fire, and provide some protection against mines or anti-tank weapons while being armed sufficiently to defend itself, as well as to support the troops once they've dismounted. Ground transportation is used whenever the infantry need greater mobility. While a short-range attack probably won't require such transportation, covering large drain areas is much more viable with it. Having the transport vehicles armed with machine guns and grenade launchers helps to give more punch to the unit overall, increasing their capabilities and effectiveness against comparable threats. Aircraft take the form of helicopter transports. These will generally be used to transport a squad or more of infantry, using their speed, mobility, and range to drop troops in locations the enemy might not expect or that could not otherwise be reached through ground transportation. Helicopters generally have door guns for basic defensive purposes, though they can often find themselves accompanied by dedicated helicopter gunships to support the transport aircraft both during the flight and at the landing zone. Aerial transportation is best used when the threat environment permits it. Flying through an area with heavy anti-aircraft capabilities is to be avoided, as it only takes one good missile strike to knock a helicopter out of the sky. Aerial transport allows troops to bypass enemy strong points on the ground and strike from unexpected directions, as well as rapidly reposition across large areas of terrain. Whether working with helicopters or ground transportation, a few simple guidelines help to keep things moving smoothly. First, leaders must keep accountability of their troops and work to quickly load or unload vehicles when the time arrives. It's up to the senior member of each infantry element to let the vehicle crew know that his troops are loaded and ready to go, or have fully unloaded, freeing the vehicle to maneuver or leave the area. Next, it's important for the overall infantry leader to choose landing sites or dismount positions that are comfortably beyond the expected enemy threat range. It's better to approach the enemy positions with infantry dispersed and moving tactically through the terrain, rather than have everyone bottled up inside a transport, risking entire elements being wiped out from a transport's destruction. Seaborne transportation comes in the form of raiding and assault craft. Whether armed or unarmed, these can rapidly drop soldiers onto coastal locations, permitting troops to strike from the sea and then quickly withdraw back to the ocean. It's best not to be taken under fire in these, as the sea offers no concealment and a boat's hull is extremely vulnerable to any enemy weaponry. Moving past transportation, there are many different assets that can combine forces with infantry during a battle. These fulfill a range of roles primarily relating to fire support and reconnaissance. On the ground, armored support, such as infantry fighting vehicles and tanks, are significant force multipliers for an infantry unit. Armored vehicles are capable of using their powerful sensors to see things the infantry might otherwise miss, and can put fire on targets well beyond the infantry's effective range, via cannons, missiles, and machine guns. 
The relationship between armor and infantry is a mutually beneficial one. The infantry provide protection and security at close range, while the armor does the same at longer distances or against heavier threats. Infantry can locate threats without exposing the armor to danger, only calling them forward when a particular target is discovered and requires engagement. Personnel carriers and infantry fighting vehicles can provide mobility to their troops, allowing forces to be rapidly drawn out of dangerous areas or redeployed to take advantage of enemy weaknesses. The heavy weapons of armored vehicles can be used to destroy hard points such as bunkers or enemy occupied buildings, as well as create breaches in walls to permit infantry to attack from unexpected directions. Having armored vehicles overwatching the movement of infantry can make for extremely responsive and accurate fires in the event that threats present themselves against the infantry. Bringing an anti-aircraft vehicle along for a mission can act as a major deterrent to enemy air forces. Armored support is best employed to defeat comparable enemy threats or when infantry needs significant overmatch capabilities to accomplish their mission. In short, it's better to bring heavier guns than the enemy whenever possible. Armor must be carefully considered against the capabilities of the enemy. If the enemy has numerous anti-tank guided missiles, it might be better to hold back friendly armor until those missiles can be neutralized by friendly infantry. Aerial support offers the same basic capabilities of fire support and reconnaissance, but from a unique vantage point it's able to see things that ground units may be unable to detect. When the enemy threat level permits it, helicopters can orbit friendly positions, providing security to forces on the ground and giving early warning of any threats closing in from a distance. These same helos can do route reconnaissance, flying along the path that friendly ground units will be using and trying to locate any threats that might be positioned in the way. Aircraft with door guns can use these to scatter and harass enemy infantry or disable soft vehicles. When something with more punch is needed, having attack helicopters in the area is a fantastic resource to draw from. Aircraft like the Blackfoot can use their missiles to destroy even heavy enemy vehicles, while their turret mounted cannons can wreak havoc on lighter targets and enemy personnel. Rocket strikes can be employed to destroy or suppress enemy forces and relieve pressure from friendly ground forces. When operating with attack aircraft, infantry can use colored smoke to indicate both friendly and enemy positions, helping aircraft direct their fire more accurately. At night, laser designators can be used for the same purpose. Assigning an infantryman as the forward air controller allows a single person to coordinate airstrikes and communicate friendly positions to the aircraft, which helps to avoid friendly fire and keeps both sides aware of what the other one's doing. Artillery support comes in two basic forms, that of man portable mortars that the infantry can bring with them, and that of larger cannon or rocket artillery that operates from greater distances. Artillery allows for infantry to call in powerful munitions from long range, striking targets from the sky with very little warning. These munitions come in a variety of forms designed to destroy ground-based vehicle and personnel threats, as well as provide screening via smoke, illumination through flares, or delivering anti-tank or anti-infantry mines on demand. Artillery requires that someone on the front lines acts as a forward observer. This person will be responsible for calling in artillery fire, communicating adjustments back to the gun crews, and relaying damage assessments after each strike. Due to the distances artillery rounds fly, it takes some time for the gun crews to determine the correct settings, dial them in, and for the rounds to fly to their target. This requires that the forward observer takes that into consideration. Targeting moving troops, for instance, requires a good amount of forward looking. It's also important that forward observers keep a wide margin of safety around their own troops. Calling fire should be done a safe distance from friendly ground forces whenever possible to allow room for errors without having rounds fall on friendlies. The bigger the munition, the larger that safety margin should be. Artillery can be used to outright destroy enemy positions, but it can also be used to suppress and mask them in order to allow infantry to maneuver. By carefully coordinating artillery fire with troop movements, the enemy can be kept under suppression until just before the assaulting troops arrive allowing them to make their final attack while the enemy is still recovering from the shock of a shelling. If you'd like more in-depth reading about combined arms and many other tactical concepts, check out the official Arma 3 Tactical Guide, part of the Deluxe Edition and available standalone as well. For more Community Guide videos, be sure to subscribe to the official Arma 3 YouTube channel. For other Arma 3 updates, keep track of the official website, Facebook, and Twitter pages. If you'd like more in-depth tutorial and multiplayer gameplay of Arma 3 and previous Arma games, I'd also recommend you check out my channel here. This is Dyslexi, and I'll see you on Altus.